Here we are going to discuss on auditing clients' business and processes. First of all, you need to acknowledge the fact that your firm have accepted to audit this particular client and that you have to report fairly to both your client and also to the shareholders. For your audited report is addressed to the members, which actually refer to the latter. Remember that is the shareholders. This is your fiduciary duty. Hence, you have to position yourself or your role play now as auditors, auditing the client's financial statements. This is extremely important for a number of students who are actually new to the discourse have the tendency to jumble or mix up the facts that they will start to answer from the point of engagement. This is definitely a gross error. We have to acknowledge that English is not our native tongue for majority of us. Hence, selection of words must be carefully exercised and this is an important tip, especially for your exams. A poster is provided that outlines the steps taken by auditor in auditing the related accounts pertaining to revenue transactions. The starting point now is to understand the inherent risk that is particularly unique to the client's business and the industry in which they operate, also known as the environment or some books use the term industry-related factors. Second, the complexity and contentiousness of revenue recognition issues. Third, the difficulty of auditing transactions and account balances. Fourth, if there's any possibility of potential misstatements by the management, a quote-unquote, also known as management integrity. Fifth, prior misstatements from previous audits. Now, in terms of industry-related factors, let's take some examples. The oil and gas sector, basically mineral resources, one of the unique features of this sector one of the unique risks of this sector is depletion of resources which is going to affect revenue. There are also cases of sustainability, take for example in the case of environment, the case of BP oil spill or also known as deep water horizon oil spill. What about agriculture? There is also business risk in agriculture. Now, Malaysia is one of the countries that export oil palm in large scales. Malaysia has been experiencing haze and this has actually affected the production of oil palm which in turn is going to affect the revenue. There is an article which has been uploaded in additional reading materials or you could just Google Haze stunts oil palm growth, oil production may fall 10% to 20%. There are also issues on sustainability for companies operating in the oil palm plantation industry for example the environment issues and also the possibility of being sanctioned by the international regulation. Now, that is why identifying and assessing the risk of material misstatement through understanding the entity and its environment is very important and this is prescribed in accordance with the International Standard on Auditing ISA 315. Okay now, if you look at ISA 520, it's about analytical procedures. Now, analytical procedures is used at the very beginning of the audit that enable auditors to identify risk areas. Hence, the auditors will be more focused. Now, what is this analytical procedure? It is basically analyzing the relationship between financial ratios within the same financial year, between years, that is trends, within the business entity, and even benchmark it to the performance of the overall industry. The analytical procedures is being used throughout the auditing process at the very beginning, during and at the end before the issuance of the audited reports. A simple example of an analytical procedure is inventory turnover has increased from 30 days to 120 days. The accounts receivable have also increased from 45 days to 150 days. Now, what would this mean and how should the auditor respond? It simply means that there is a property whereby the business entity, the client, is not capable of selling their product due to the decline in the market demand, product obsolescence, unquality products, and so forth. Therefore, auditors need to be more focused in this particular account in ensuring that the management assertions, especially on valuation, reflects true and fair view on the account itself, that's account inventory, by carrying out more audit procedures especially the substantive procedures. Okay, remember earlier I had mentioned about COSO 2013? Now, as auditor, we need to document our understanding of the internal control 
and control activities in there's so many ways. Okay, first of all, obtain the written policy and procedures pertaining to the related transactions. We could also document our understanding through flowcharts, narratives, and internal control questionnaires. Here, I will provide you the, an example of a flowchart. Dr. Asna and Dr. Maslina will present to you in the form of narratives and internal control questionnaire, respectively.